Hi thinkers, welcome to the data structures in Python course on thinkxacademy.com. In this series, we have already covered introduction to graph data structure and its representation using HSNC list. Now we are going to cover traversal in a graph data structure. The first technique to do traversal or search in a graph data structure is the best, uh, which is the breadth first search and breadth first search is very important. It has a lot of applications and in a lot of interviews, there are a lot of questions that come from this particular algorithm. So we will write the algorithm in Python. So first of all, we have a given a graph data structure here, which is uh, has these uh, vertices and this is how it is connected. So we have zero, one, two, three, and four. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this program, I'm going to actually, and here I will write the uh, main function using name equals to equals to here I will first create a graph representation of the corresponding graph that I have drawn here. The first way is to use the matrix. The second is to use the HSNC list. But here we have an interesting option, which is the third option, which is to create a dictionary, right? So here we are actually trying to create a dictionary here. So I will just write that we are going to create a dictionary to represent this graph. So in dictionary, we have keys and separated by colon, we have values. So it's something looks like this, right? So basically uh, we are going to write the keys as the vertices. So zero is a vertex and then we have one as the vertex and then we have two as the vertex then three and then four. And now what I'm going to do here is in the values, I'm going to provide an array. In this array, we will actually put all the elements that are directly connected to this node. So two, uh, if we consider zero, one is connected, two is connected and three is connected to it. In case of uh, one, we have a zero connected to it and then we have two connected to it. And now let's consider node number two. It has zero connected to it and one connected to it. And the final one is three. And here three is connected to only zero. And the last one is four, it is connected to two. So here we have a representation of this graph. We will leave some indentation here. So now what I will do is I will make a call to a BFS function here. And here I will supply it with two values graph which is this dictionary and also the node from where I wish to start the traversal, right? So zero is the node from where I want to do the traversal. So let's understand what exactly is breadth for search now before implementing this function. And let's see what is the approach in the algorithm. So here we are going to start from this root node. So I'm going to write here that this is the starting position. The basic idea of breadth for search is to uh, traverse or is to display all the adjacent nodes to it, right? So if we are going to start the traversal from zero, the BFS algorithm is going to move the traversal in such a way. So we will first print zero. One is directly connected to zero. You can see that two is also directly connected to it and three is also directly connected to it. So first we will display one, then we will display two. Now, when we reach two, we can see that four is connected to two, but we are not going to display it because this is the main rule of breadth first search that we are going to first go to the breadth and then only we are going to increase the levels. The next one we will have to display three. And now we are going to uh, display the values of the neighbors of these, uh, which is one, two and three. So one has a neighbor zero and two, both are already being traversed. So once we have done a traversal on a node, we are not going to visit it again. Similarly with three also, zero is already visited, but four is not visited. So now I will insert four here, right? So it is known as breadth first search because if you consider a tree, a data structure like tree, and we apply the same rule, which is to display all the adjacent nodes. So if I will try from the root node, we have these two adjacent nodes. So basically we are actually trying to traverse level by level. So that's why it is known as breadth by breadth, right? So this is a breadth first. In depth first, we are going to explore in the depth, right? So if I go from this node to this node, I can ignore this no these nodes. I will first explore this node to the whole extent, right? So that's how 
the dfs and bfs works right so now let's see how we can implement this in python so first thing is we are going to create a visited array right we can use the set function to create such type of an array and initially this array is empty this visited array is going to be the final output where we will display all these uh, we will display all the nodes which we have traversed the second thing is we are going to use a queue data structure Queues are basically used to perform BFS algorithm because uh, it is actually a very feasible data structure in this type of scenario. So initially the queue will hold only one element which is zero, which is the root element, right? So we will first add zero to the queue. So first of all, let's implement this part in, the, uh, in our Python file. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a I'm going to define a function BFS. It will take the graph and it will take the root element. And in the next line, I'm just going to write, uh, I'm going to create a visited array using set function. And then I'm going to simply create a queue data structure, right? Now here we can actually create a queue using list in Python. We can create an empty queue and we want the first element root element should be there so we can do it something like this this is not an ideal way we will use the collections library because when we want to perform frequent nq and dq operation inside of a queue this is not a recommended way although this will also work but still uh, we are going to make use of the collections library here so i will just use collections dot dq function dq function is actually used to create a queue and here it will create an empty queue but i want the root element to be inside this queue so i will just write root here this will create a queue with a root element here in our case it is zero now in the next line let's see what we will do next after inserting zero the next thing is here we know that this is a queue data structure so it has two positions which is the front and the rear position we perform the nq operation at the a rare position and we perform the dq operation uh, in the at the front position so the first thing i'm going to do here is uh, when we insert any element in a queue we are going to dq out of it right so we will pop this element out of this queue and whenever we pop an element out of a queue we are going to insert it in our visited array because now we are going to visit this array right so let's implement this pass uh, this part first so here what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I will create a while loop which will go till uh, the queue is empty, right? So the algorithm will start from the first one and uh, it, until and unless this queue becomes empty, it is going to perform the operations, which is to, the first one is to perform the DQ operation, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write queue.pop left function. Right, so q dot pop left uh, pop left function. It is going to dq the element from the left part. One important thing is here we will have to import the collections library, and here uh, we have we are actually popping this element out. Now, since we will have to store this element in the visited array, I am going to create a vertex variable which will hold this element, and I am just going to quickly add it to our visited array using add function. And here I will just write the vertex, right? Uh, so now we have added the vertex. Now let's see what is the next part. The next part says once you have uh, uh, dequeued an element out of the queue, uh, it means that you are visiting that particular node. So what you have to do is you will have to find all the adjacent nodes to this queue. So you can see one, two, and three, these are the adjacent nodes. And you will have to push all of these nodes inside of the queue. So I will push one, I will push two, I will push three here inside of the queue. We'll have to do the NQ operation. And one more thing, uh, which is very important condition here, which says that whenever we are performing the NQ operation, right? Whenever we are trying to NQ all the edges and nodes, we are going to make sure that they are not already inside of our visited array. So you can see here, one, two, and three are the adjacent nodes, but they are not in the visited array. So I'm going to push all of them here. In the next iteration, I will pop the element one. I will mark it as visited. 
and now you can see one is directly connected to zero and two but zero is already there in the visited array we will write a condition for it and two is not uh, two is also uh, is not here so we can nq2 here something like this right and now what the algorithm will do is now we will dq2 so 2 is being dq so it will also be marked in the visited array 2 is connected to 0 and 4 0 is already there but 4 is not there so we will nq4 the then we have this 3 here so we will have to see uh, 3 is not there in this list so i'm going to nq3 here right so first of all i will dq3 and mark it here right so 3 is connected to 0 so this 3 will not come here right we are dqing 3 so once 3 is dqed it will be marked here 3 is connected to 0 0 is already there in our visited array and now the last one is 4 uh, so 2 uh, will be dqed right when we are dequeuing it we will check you can see that it is already there in our visited array so we are not going to push it in the visited array we are going to move to the next element so now 4 will be popped out and since it is not in the visited element we are going to push it in this visited set and the final result is here and we are just going to display this final result right so let's uh, write the very simple algorithm uh, here what i want to do is at each and every iteration i will have to uh, first get all the adjacent nodes the way to do is if i want the adjacent nodes which is the list of all the nodes at the vertex position right so vertex is actually the element that is popped out which you can see here and here uh, this vertex initially was zero so you can see it will give me this list one two three so the value of i will be one two and then three so at each and every iteration i will check whether the value i which i want to insert or nq inside the queue whether it is already there inside the visited array or not so i'm going to write here if i is not in a visited array now i can perform the queue operation nq operation using the append function i'll just write i right so now this will append the ith element in the queue this will go on again and again until and unless the queue becomes empty so after four the queue will be empty because all the items has been dequeued out of it now we are going to display the final result here so here i'm just going to print the visited array here uh, the node 2 is connected to 0 1 and it is also connected to 4 so here i just forgot that so i will save the changes and run this program right so now you can see here it will display the output 0 1 2 and 3 and 4 so that's all for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will write we will use the bfs algorithm to detect cycles in an undirected graph and like this video and also subscribe our channel so that uh, you will get notified whenever we will launch the next tutorial so thanks for watching